Hey, it's Kim Commando today, your daily podcast to keep you up to date with all things digital and beyond. And I'd love to have you be a part of our podcast. You can make an appointment to speak with me. Just head over to commando.com and on the top right, there's a button that says email Kim, fill that out and that's it. All right, I always like to kick off each hour with something really fun. And do you have something old technology that you're like, oh, I wish I could have that back? Uh, for me, it was my Motorola Razor phone. And now for all of you Gen Zers and millennials, you may not be familiar with this technology. It's a little box that you clipped on your belt and it just has this black and white screen and it doesn't do much. It just shows you messages that people send you. You can't reply to the message at all. And when you get a message, this little black box that you normally put on your belt buckle or your pants or maybe just to a shirt pocket, is that it would vibrate. And then after it vibrated, it'd go beep, 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 beep. Okay, what it's called, it was called a pager, a pager. Well, the reason why I bring this up, according to the Wall Street Journal, there's this really big, dedicated bunch of folks who refuse to let go of their pagers. Okay, uh, Take trauma surgeon Brittany Blankhead from Texas. Uh, she recalls the moment, she said, when she first got a pager in 2011, she's like, wow, I am in the big leagues of communication. Maybe she never heard of an iPhone? Not sure. Anyway, uh, the country's leading paging company, bet you didn't know that existed, Spock reports that there are still approximately 800,000 pagers in use across the United States. Hmm. You know that sound, beep, beep, beep? I know. Kind of reminds you of like maybe like, they had a pager on and they were really big, like they were backing up. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Yeah, okay. Anyway, on that happy note, welcome ladies and gentlemen to this. It's America's largest show about all things digital, your most trusted source. I'm of course, Kim Commando, America's beloved digital goddess here with you once again. And you can find my award-winning show on over 420 top stations throughout the United States. We're streaming in your favorite radio app and you can find us as a webcast, as a podcast commercial free over at commando.com, inside the Commando community. And a special shout out goes out to all of our listeners on the American Forces Network Radio, serving more than 375,000 American servicemen and women in the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marine Corps, the Coast Guard, and the Space Force in 175 different countries. And our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line is now open at one 825 5254 is the way to join us. And you can always send me your questions, by the way, through the website, commando.com, upper right-hand corner. There's a link that says email Kim. All right, every single day, I just look at and study all these different things on the web, at least 30 different websites. And so I can tell you about the top five things that you need to know. And coming in at number one right now is how'd you like a free TV? Hmm, a free TV? Yes. A startup from the co-founder of Pluto TV is giving out a half a million free televisions. The 55-inch 4K models from the company called Telly, they have all the bells and whistles, but it's free, so what's the catch? Yes, you pay with your data. They have 4K HDR displays, not the best, but it's okay. Uh, Built-in five-drive soundbar and a free 4K Android streaming stick, so you can control it all by just saying, you know, hey, Telly. Uh, it has a camera in there, too, for your video calls. Now, here's the kicker. About a quarter of the second smaller screen that sits underneath the main screen, you're going to start seeing ads. And you cannot opt out of any of the tracking. Now, this is super interesting. Vizio made $1.4 million in gross profit selling TVs in the first quarter of this year. But listen to this. They made almost $74 million in profit by selling advertising and viewer data. Yeah, Vizio TVs are just there to sell them ads and sell your data. So this Tele TV is gonna pack up all, all it's gonna package up all your data and sell to who knows who for a free TV that's probably worth about 300 bucks. Um, I'm gonna say no to Tele. That's what I'm gonna say. All right, coming in at number two, some new updates from Google. Uh, Google's got a handy new tool for anyone who has a Gmail account. It's basically so many of us, right? In the next few weeks, Gmail is going to be rolling out a dark web report tool, and it's going to scan your email address to see if it's been leaked during a data breach and then let you know. Uh, by the way, if you don't have a Gmail account, you can do that right now. Just head over to the website, haveibeenpwned.com. And that's not all Google has unveiled for you Android phone owners. You now are going to get a bonus dash cam. This is super smart. The latest Android update from Google shows that you can use, soon be able to use your Android smartphone as a bona fide dash cam. It's going to start recording as soon as it connects to your car. Stop once when you turn it off. 
And it can run in the background for up to 24 hours. And something else, if you want to pop into another app, and it's still going to keep recording. So it's a great way. If you have an old phone just laying around, you might want to start dusting that bad boy off. Coming in at number three, oh, I, you know, I just hate when companies do this. Hissy printer. Yes, HP printers. So when you buy a printer, you expect it to just print. But Hewlett Packard has pulled a sneaky move. They've effectively bricked your printer if you're not using official pricey HP ink. Here's the deal. It's a new firmware update. HP has made it so you can't print with any ink cartridge that's not directly from Hewlett Packard. Now, if you buy cheap ink cartridges elsewhere, uh, yeah, I'm talking to you. You're buying them on Amazon or someplace else. You're just going to be out of luck. The average ink cartridge from HP is 40 bucks. Now, HP says, and I'm going to read this verbatim. HP says, third-party cartridges that use non-HP chips or circuitry can pose risks to the hardware performance, print quality, and security. Security? What? All right, so how does it know that you're using official HP ink? It, using something called a digital rights management system, and that's, pre, that's preventing these unauthorized inkjet cartridges from being used. So HP is saying, oh, if you don't use our ink, it's going to be susceptible to hacking and malware. I mean, come on, just be honest. You want to start selling more ink, don't you? You know, I was thinking, I've been thinking about this for a long time. Imagine this. You know when you run out of paper on your printer and then it gives you a beep or you get a notification or an error message? Wouldn't it be great if the printer just said out loud, no sheet. That's right. No sheet. All right. Number four, moving on. I thought that was funny. Some new Apple products. Rumors are all over because the Worldwide Developer Conference just a few weeks away. And it seems like Apple's closely guarded secret called the Reality Pro is going to be coming a reality. This is a VR type headset that will show you email, text messages, directions, anything else as you use your iPhone 4 in front of your eyes. It's going to be out in September. The price, come on, folks, we're talking about Apple. Not going to be cheap. Uh, $300? Nope. $800? Nope. $2,000? Nope. $3,000. Wow. Now, let me tell you. If this is just a rehash of Oculus or Google Glass, it's not going to be a slam dunk. Oh, by the way, another Apple announcement. In their iPhones, we're going to have something called live speech. So you can be able to record 15 minutes of audio, your voice, to record a digital copy of your voice for use in person or on the phone. I can see why this would be a great feature for some folks, but I just wonder how long it's going to take before scammers totally take advantage of it. And finally, this coming in at number five, you can post a video to YouTube and retire if you know the numbers. Yes, like Mr. Beast, you don't have to have 20 million subscribers to cash in. Word out this past week that all you need is 1,000 subscribers and you have to have viewers watch your video content for 4,000 hours. That's a lot of time, okay, 4,000 hours. Okay. So there are all different kinds of ads that you can do. But the bottom line here is that if you've got a YouTube channel, you have a thousand subscribers you're going to need like four thousand hours of video to make any bank and i'll tell you those are videos are really hard to make i mean but speaking of youtube i always love how all these young youtubers are suddenly des developing a love for classic rock that's right they just love classic rock and they're always telling you you know don't forget to like share and subscribe get it share subscribe if i could turn back time maybe i would not have done that joke sorry all right, coming up in just a few moments, we have our trivia question of the week and a special guest contestant. You don't want to miss that. We're also going to tell you how you can fast track your travels with a new Passport app. Oh, are your nudes safe in the cloud? And of course, we have all of your great phone calls. And you have me, Kim Commando. If you haven't checked out our new free newsletters, do it right now while you're thinking about it. Head over to GetKim.com. Once again, that's GetKim.com. Every single day, you'll get tech news and security alerts. That's getkim.com. And how about we start with uh, David in Decatur, Illinois. I had originally did some online investing, and I have a fairly large chunk of money in there. And 
about three weeks ago, I got a text from a lawyer stating that he was a lawyer, which I didn't believe at the time. And he had wire transfer information, and he had said that in the text that um, he was contacted by um, the Consumer Fraud Protection Bureau. And that okay. my account was um, red flagged due to uh, money laundering. And that if I sent him information on the wire transfer and other information, that they would go over it. And if they thought they could retrieve 70% of my money, that they would take the case. Um, it would be like $1,000 up front. And if they retrieved money, then it would be another $1,000 to which... I didn't do, and I don't believe he is who he says he is. Okay. But when I got that text, I was like, okay, how does he have any of this wire transfer information? Because he had the bank. He had the amount. So I went to Coin One, and I went ahead and tried to log into my account. When it pulled up, it stated that due to abnormal activity, I was to contact customer service. So I went ahead, logged in, tried logging in, um, got a hold of con uh, customer service. They mm -hmm. responded within 30 seconds. Um, they asked me my phone number. I gave them my phone number, and about 10 seconds later, it showed uh Service was tempor temporarily down. Okay, I thought, okay, no big deal, I'll try later. Well, I kept trying and kept trying, and it, it would not, I could not log in. I couldn't even get customer service. So I said, here recently they did an update to their app, and they gave me a link. So I, I re-downloaded the app going through the link, and... I was able to get customer service right away again. And okay. I tried again. I said, you know, can you please help me or whatever? Sure. What's your phone number? I gave my phone number. Ten seconds later, same thing again. Come to find out I did this like 12 times on Sunday. And it got to the certain point to where, okay, I'm not, I'm not giving you my phone number. I'm going to try to explain the situation of what's going on and try to fix this problem. Well, I know. Okay. For a fact well, you know what? Let's let let's, let let me let me ask you some questions. Sure. Okay. Number one, how much did you invest? Um, originally it was a five hundred dollar wire transfer, and then the second time it was a twenty thousand dollar wire transfer. You got you got a lot of money in there. I do. And this person um, that was helping me invest, she was guiding me, and I don't know if I trust her or not, but she has no account information. She has no passwords. I assume that. If my money was in Coin One, that everything would be fine. And um, well, you know, I, I I'm not really I've never used Coin One. Uh, Coin One is based in Korea. Yep. And supposedly, in United States, people who live in the United States, you're not allowed to participate in in Coin One at all. Really. Uh, so that may be that may be part of the problems that you have right now. Uh, you might want to try, and I don't know if this is going to work, uh, is to request uh, a new customer ID. Uh, you may need to have a Korean phone number to do that. Oh, wow. Uh, so this this is a big mess. You're in a big mess. You are. Oh, I know. <laughs> For sure. Um, this is a really big mess. Uh, originally, like a year and a half ago, I downloaded like TD Ameritrade, I downloaded E-Tray, I downloaded Robinhood, and, and Coin One was also one of the ones that I downloaded. And, and back then, I, I didn't invest in Coin One. I did the other ones. And here mm -hmm. recently, when I ran across this person, they suggested, of course, they are Asian. They suggested using this Coin One app, and they were teaching me binary option trading. When oh. she, she actually made me on six trades, made me four thousand dollars. So I thought, you know, okay, good deal. you know, this is this is a this is a classic scam. Okay, uh, because she was teaching you how to do it, and you were probably you somehow you gave her your account information, uh, and then these other, and then you can't get into your account, 
And then some a third party comes along out of nowhere and says, you know, this is money laundering and now you've got to give us money to get your money back. And because everybody's all working against you. They For are sure. all in cahoots. For okay? sure. It's called it's called a pig butcher scam. And you're the pig and they're going to butcher you and they're going to steal all your money. Which they have they've probably already done it. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you that. Okay. Uh you know, you can report this as a crime to the FBI in the Internet Crime Complaint Center. They do read every complaint that comes along. Uh, you know, I wish that I could come through the phone and say, you know, here, I'm going to wave my magical digital goddess wand and get your $20,000 back. But, you, know, you guys, you guys just got to know what you're dealing with when you start putting these apps on your phone and giving away Tens of thousands of dollars. David, I don't want to leave you hanging. Uh, I'm going to ask um, our IT genius, John, to take a look at this, see if there's something that John can maybe lend a hand with to, to see what's going on. But, you know, based upon everything that I know, I, I would, I'd say that the 20 grand's gone. But we're going to put John on it. We do this from time to time. John is on our team. He's on our it's a great staffer. He knows a lot about a lot of things, and maybe there's something that he can lend a hand with. Um, so, David, make sure that we have all your contact information. We'll reach out to you within the next week or so. Sorry. Oh, bad. 20 grand. Whew. Always tough to take phone calls like that, right? Just tough. All right. I got an email from a fashion photographer who wanted to know how he could keep his wife's naked pictures safe in the cloud. Okay. Here's the deal is that I know Google Drive, iCloud, I know they're free, but they're definitely a no-go for very personal reasons. And here's the reason why. You're probably automatically signed in on all your devices. So what happens if your laptop or phone is stolen? That's why we recommend encrypting a zip file and storing it other places. We've got the steps on how to do that over on the website. That's commando.com. Hey, hang with me right now because our trivia question of the week is coming up. You don't want to miss it. Okay, sports fans, get your brain cells ready for an epic challenge with commanding the Tech World Trivia. And as I keep saying, this is not bingo night. No, no, no. These are brain-busting questions that are going to put your noggin to the test. Now, to add to the excitement, we always have a special guest ready to take on the challenge and compete for the ultimate grand prize. First of all, we have a Kim Commando Show fanny pack valued about $25, $30, bucks, somewhere around that price range. Actually, I think it's priceless. And then you're also going to get a free bag of Dr. Marty's Nature's Blend Dog Food. That's a value of $59.95. And joining us this week for Commanding the Tech World Trivia is Sarah in Arlington, Virginia. Hi there, Sarah. Hi, how are you? Great. What do you do there in Arlington? Um, well, I'm a 17-year-old student and I'm a Girl Scout. Oh, that's awesome. That's great. Yeah. Oh, I was a Boy Scout leader that matters but it was kind of a crazy thing all right so uh, I'm sure you've heard about Amazon so our question this week is about Amazon and let me tell you Sarah there's this this story about Jeff Bezos now he's the founder of Amazon and it involves his approach to customer service so according to all these reports whenever Jeff Bezos now keep in mind he's the founder of Amazon this is a you know trillion dollar company and he had a unique way of addressing customer complaints or issues. So when customers would figure out how to send him an email directly, he would forward that message to the appropriate department head with just one single character response. So he didn't forward it, say, to the person who was in charge of the Amazon Echo devices and say, hi, Joe, please look into this and let me know. He just put one character. So was that character a question mark, a thumbs down emoji, an exclamation mark, or is it a dollar sign? Okay, so when when customers sent Jeff Bezos a note, he would forward that to the appropriate department head. And did he put at the very top just one character? Was it a question mark, a thumbs down emoji, an exclamation mark, or was it a dollar sign? So, Sarah, what do you think that answer is? Um, that's a hard one, but I'm going to have to go with the emoji, the thumbs down emoji. We're going to go with a thumbs down emoji. Okay, let's see what... Our judges say. Oh, oh 
close. Sarah. Okay. All right. So, okay. Well, I'm going to give you another shot. Okay. So it's not the thumbs down. So is it the question mark, the exclamation mark, or is it a dollar sign? Okay. The dollar sign. Okay. Oh, Sarah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, we're going to try one more time. One more time to, for the big win. Okay, is it a question mark or is it an exclamation mark? I'm going to go with the question mark. Okay, let's see what the judges say. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Sarah, you won! That's so great! It's okay. You know what? Uh, you won the big prize. That's all that matters. Uh, so... The rumor also has it when somebody would get a note from Jeff Bezos with just a question mark that they would freak out. They'd be like, oh, my gosh, because, you know, it didn't say anything like, you know, I know you're doing a great job. Just did a question mark, which I have to tell you, ever since I read that, I do the same thing with my staff. But a question mark means so much, Sarah. Like, you know, what happened? What can we do to fix it? And you don't have to go through all that mumbo jumbo and try to just make it nice. Just put a question mark and move on. Which, speaking of, what did the police do when they wanted to interrogate Mark? What did they do when they wanted to interrogate Mark, Sarah? They question Mark. Oh, that's a bad one, isn't it? Uh, I know. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, okay, Sarah, since you're the big winner, I know you have some questions for me, so how can I lend a hand? Yes. So, um, I'm a 17-year-old, and I'm working on my Girl Scouts award project which is similar to the mm -hmm. Eagle Scout Award. And my goal is to Got raise it. awareness about iron deficiency in athletes. It's a pretty common problem, especially um, among young female athletes, and it's something that I personally struggled with. Um, but not many people are uh, aware of what they can do about it. Um, my project advisor is a doctor, and I've developed an infographic and an educational video to try to inform athletes, parents, and coaches about the issue. In addition awesome. to creating the content and sharing it, I also need to track metrics. So I plan to put my video on YouTube. But aside from that, I would like to also be able to store the video and infographic together in the cloud where they can be easily shared and where I can track views. Right now, they are currently both on Google Doc or Google Drive, um, but I can't track the metrics on a personal Google account. Um, in the meantime, um, I may consider building a simple web page at some point, but that could take a while. So um, I basically need well, a quick way to share links in the content and track views in an affordable okay. way. All right. So we can do all of this, Sarah. We're going to make sure that you get that award, too. And it's it really is a, a good cause that you're doing because I – uh, I think so many young women are suffering from iron deficiency and they have no clue. I'm just, they're just like, oh, I'm tired, you know, and it's, no, it's more than you just being tired. There are things going on in your body. Um, all right. So with YouTube, as you mentioned, you'll be able to track views, likes, comments, and everything else. Uh, and that allows you to have access to this whole YouTube analytics dashboard. Now, if you want to track the distribution of the infographic, uh, believe it or not, it's not difficult to build a website. Just go over to like Wix or Weebly or even Squarespace. And basically, you just pick a template and you could probably have a website up and running for, say, $10 a month, $15 a month and about an hour and a half. And you could uh, put your logo there at the top and then you could have the YouTube video and your infographic. And then that would give you a way to actually uh, put Google Analytics on that page. And then if you have Google Analytics on the page, is that allows you to track just about everything. I mean, where the visitors come from, how long they stay, what's their bounce rate, what do they click on. And then you can also put tracking URLs and UTMs on uh, the infographic itself and any other type of materials that you want there. Um, you could also, if you were just, you were, if you were just distributing this uh, infographic on an email, you can also track it by using Bitly, that's B-I-T-L-Y. And Bitly will shorten down that URL or, you know, over at the web page if you don't want, if you just want to put it in an email. And then that would also be a way for you to track your links. Now, it doesn't give you all the nitty gritty details that say YouTube or Google Analytics does, but it does give you just basic tracking. Now, one of the things that you can do, Sarah, is, um, and I encourage you to do this, is that you play the kid card. Okay. 
there there are only times in life when you can play the kid card. When you hit about 22 or 3, you can no longer play that kid card because then everybody's like, oh, well, you know, come on. like You're 24. You should, like, have your act together by now, right? So what I would do is I would write – um, I would write an email saying, you know, I'm Sarah, and this is what I found with iron deficiency. This is my Girl Scout Gold Award project, and I put together this handy dandy infographic and um, in this YouTube video, and I would love for you to share it. And then I would drop that into the contact mailboxes for, say, all the uh, say the digital mom blogs, right? Uh, some one. some athletic blogs. Uh, you know, you know this audience better than than I do because I'm not in the girls' iron deficiency world, but you are. So where, wherever you could drop that, that would be really amazing because again, people want to help young people who are on a mission and they have passion and they're working towards some accomplishment, right? So. Yeah. So that's where, when I say use the kid card, that's what I'm talking about. Is to, and, and to and, and you know if they want a phone number for you, set up a Google Voice number, so this way you're not giving them out yourself. And I would even set up another Gmail account just for this campaign, so this way you're making sure that you're not giving out any of your personal stuff, because you don't know if they're gonna. I'll tell you, it's kind of weird, but you don't know what they're gonna do with it. If they're going to publish it, then you don't want your cell phone number all over the internet. I mean, because they some people make mistakes, right? So that's why I just want to make sure that you keep your privacy and everything all secure. Um, did all of this make sense? I did, yes. But, okay. Um, I was considering using uh, bit.ly, um, but my one issue is that with that would be if someone would go to my Google Drive and share that link, you can't track the clicks. Mm, yeah, that's that's a problem. That's why you'd have to figure out. That's why you, that's why I'm kind of pointing you back to that website because okay. because then you'd have that then you'd have that full Google Analytics experience and you'd be able to put everything on there and you can track all this. You can set all this tracking up say, on Wix, Weebly, or on uh, Squarespace. And again, you're going to get views, unique visitors, engagement metrics. You're going to see where they came from, how long they stayed on the page, and all kinds of great details like that. So um, so get that up and running. And then if you want me to take a look at it afterwards, uh, just go ahead and shoot me a link, and I'm happy to give you my feedback. And you go, girl. Congratulations. I know you're going to get that Girl Scout Gold Award because you got it going on. All right, let's talk about how you can find what you'd like to watch for free. Because I don't know if you've looked at your streaming service bills lately, but it's astronomical. The average person is underestimating their monthly bill by over 100 bucks every single month. So if you want to get some free content, number one, you want to get a, an amplified, unamplified, or large outdoor antenna. So you can get those free HG channels. We're going to tell you exactly what each one is. We're also going to give you our recommendation starting around $29. Then you can use a special site to find out when your shows are actually on. It's really fantastic, and you can reach broadcast towers up to 250 miles away. The, the program is called zap to it and I don't want you to Google search that because you're probably going to end up at some spam site or malware, but just know we have all the links on how to use it, and you're really going to love this site if you've never tapped into it. And also these antennas that you can use to get free HD programming. Just head over to commando.com. That's K-O-M-A-N-D-O.com. And there, there's a link that says Kim Show. All right. Still to come, we have more of your great phone calls, as well as if you're going to be traveling internationally, I have an app that you need to get right now here on Kim Commando Today. Uh, Dan in Plymouth, Wisconsin. Glad to have you with us. Hello, Kim. Thank you for taking my call. I uh, appreciate it. You betcha. It. Appreciate what you're doing on the radio. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, how can I lend a hand? So I'm wondering, in Google Maps, if you put a location in, Google usually gives you three choices on different routes to get to the location. And I'm wondering if there's an app that you could actually put the routes that you wanted to travel, and it would follow mm -hmm. those directions. Um, sure. What do you do for a living? I'm um, in transportation. So, so you, so you 
are a, a truck driver, over the road driver. Is that it? Yes, actually, it's specialized. Oh. We do a lot of oversized um, loads where each state you have to apply for the permits, and then they give you specific roads oh. that you have to follow. Oh, you know, those are so cool. I, um, I was. This is probably a couple of years ago, and it was like two o'clock in the morning, and they had. The 51 freeway shut down outside of Phoenix, right inside Phoenix, rather, between Phoenix and Scottsdale. And they were transporting this 1929 GM future bus. And I was like, it was astounding how they just shut down the whole freeway. And this guy's going right in the center with this massive oversized load. So that's what you do? Yes, not quite that big. That's that's really specialized, yes. When they're shutting down freeways, because of uh, the weight restrictions. Yeah, that's that's really specialized. Not quite that big. All right. Well, um, here's the deal, is that you're not going to be able to find this in Google Maps, as you know. There's a, a couple of things, a couple of programs that you can check out. Uh, one's called, and we'll send you links to these so you can see which one actually will work the best for you. Uh, there's truck GPS navigation, and that gives you uh, clearance, local facility directions, weight restrictions, all that other good stuff, and allows you to actually say, this is the route that I want to be on. Uh, the same thing is uh, another app called Truck Map, and um, there's another one called Optimerat, and that's $35 a, a month. So you might want to, you know, maybe that might be out of the price budget, but there's definitely apps that are made just for your occupation. Again, there's called the Truck GPS Navigation, uh, Truck Map, and then another one called Optimo Route. And hang on the line, Dan, because we'll send you links to all these so you can check them out. And thank you for your call. All right. When you go overseas, getting back into the United States can be a total hassle. You've got jet lag, currency exchanges, and those long, long lines at customs. You've got to fill out those paper forms. Ugh. That's why you need to get Mobile Passport Control or Mobile Passport for short. It's a free government app that lets you skip all those long lines at customs. That's right. You're going to love this. You can use it at over 30 airports and also four cruise ports in the United States. So how do you get it? Either in Google Play or Apple App, you want to download the Mobile Passport Control app. You just fill out all the profile information. And then when you land, you fill out the customs declaration and submit your form right there in the app. And then on the ground, you're going to follow the signs that say Mobile Passport Control Lane. You just show them what's going on with your phone and your passport, and then boom. You're done. That's it. You're going to love it. Again, it's called Mobile Passport Control. Again, it's good for airports as well as cruise ports. And if you love short tips like this, make sure that you get my daily tech update wherever you get your podcast, just two minutes a day. Great for when you're brushing your teeth every single morning. You get fresh breath and fresh tech goodies. Again, that's the daily tech update. And don't forget, 24-7, you can always find me at commando.com. And be sure to tell three friends about our show and podcast. Thank you for that. This program is a copyrighted production of Westar Multimedia Entertainment and protected by the copyright laws. Any rebroadcast or use of this program for commercial, business, economic, or financial purposes without the written permission of Westar Multimedia Entertainment is strictly prohibited.